This is KTN News. We have been talking to all parties about this and as mentioned earlier, our feeling is that international best practice is not to change electoral laws so close to an election. International best practice is not to change uh, the laws uh, halfway to an election. Um, so you're watching Crossfire. Thank you for staying with us. We have Junet Mohamed, Sunna East, a member of parliament. We also have Din Maswekesa Barasa, member of parliament for Kimilili. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with us. So away from NASA protests, I want us to talk about the election laws amendments. And Mwashimiwa Wekesa, I'll begin with you. Um, why is there such a push to change these laws now. The EU is on record saying you cannot be changing this halfway through. Um, religious leaders have also been speaking up against this. The opposition is saying you cannot be changing uh, the, the electoral laws now. What are your thoughts? You see, mm. the same questions that is being asked by people, that why are NASA demanding that we have a change of guard in, the, in, the, in, in, in IEBC? The issue is here is not about time but it's about the objective of what we want to achieve as parliament. The role of enacting laws rests with the National Assembly. And after the Supreme Court delivered the ruling, there are some elements that are within the current election laws that need to be changed. Okay. And uh, parliament has just begun the process of amending those laws. Mm -hmm. And we began by forming an uh, an ad hoc committee chaired by Honorable Cheptumo, NASA were to send in their representative, which they didn't send, because we thought this is a, a platform where uh, Kenyans can give their views through before this committee so that we can change a few elements. For example, okay. Linda, mm. we were told by the Supreme Court that some of the reasons why they why they annulled the, 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 the Uhuru Kenyatta's win is because uh, some forms were fake. And some forms did not have a serial numbers, did not have uh, watermarks, and they were completely fake. Some okay. were not signed by returning officers. So what are we going to do as parliament to ensure that we have responsible returning officers who are not going to collude with people who know they are going to lose an election to fail to sign those forms so they can be annulled again? Okay. So we said we must enact the law that if you are a returning officer and you approve the use of a fake form, and you fail to sign, to sign a statutory form being used by IABC, then you should know that you are on your way to jail with a fine of five million. And I will ask you this question because it has been asked. So what if I'm a presiding officer or a returning officer, and I'm uncomfortable with the numbers on those forms, what happens? I mean, how that we are uncovered which numbers? You've had an election the tabulated numbers, you're uncomfortable with them. How do you expect me to sign? You see, those forms which were, which, which were not signed, they were coming from polling centers. The boss of a polling center is a presiding officer. So he is the one who should put the figures. He is the one mandated to sign to key in figures. The, the, the clerks are not allowed by the law to sign or put any figure on the form. Okay. The person who does this is a presiding officer. Do so you if you are said of you will never sign mm. or the figures are cooked, it's you who cooked those, those figures. Tonight. You see, Linda, first these amendments... And first of all, Mushimio, are these amendments being driven by Jubilee? No, no, no. no. They are being driven by Parliament. I know uh, NASA have been boycotting, but uh, Parliament is not made up of Jubilee and NASA only. We have independent members of Parliament. We have members of Parliament from Mungano Party. We have from Maindreo Chap Chap. So the House, and I can tell you for free, that when we meet debating these things in the National Assembly, they are, when they go court, there are only three counties that are maybe they are not represented, uh, Siaya, uh, Kisumu, and Homa Bay. But the rest of the country, I can assure you for free, is well represented uh, by members of Parliament. So whatever we are discussing in the House, the absence of, uh, of NASA mm. who are boycotting, uh, Kenyans are being involved in this process. Mashima. Parliament, I first, this is a jubilee sponsored 
uh, bill, which is even on the, the bill, it is a jubilee party sponsored bill. They should not say it is parliament doing it. Secondly, it has to do with parliament. This is no, it has got nothing to do with parliament. Okay. This is jubilee sponsored bill, okay. an amendment. And it has even the backing of the highest offices in jubilee. The president and the deputy president pronounce themselves outside parliament that they are supporting those amendments. Secondly, the parliament consists of 290 members of parliament, 12 nominated and 47 women reps. It's not about counties. When mm. you say Kisumu, Siaya, I don't know what, the parliament does not operate in form of counties. It operates in form of constituencies. So you count people who are present there in, in form of constituencies. Okay. Secondly, the, thirdly, these amendments are unconstitutional. These amendments are very unconstitutional and it is, it, they are amendments that are basically meant to propel Jubilee back into power. How? That is the, the only purpose they're supposed to serve. How? By mutilating the powers of the chairman, that they are not sure of the chairman of the IBC, that any commissioner can, 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 uh, can swear in the president-elect, and if the chief justice and the deputy are not there, any judge can swear, the, the, the president, you know. Those other issues we are hearing of returning officers are minors, that they just want to, to confuse the people. Okay. But the main agendas are about the commission, and about the, the swearing in by the chief justice in, and his deputy. In your mind, why would Jubilee want to do this? They're not sure of the chief justice. They think because he annulled the elections, he may refuse to swear them in. So they are fearing that they want to have uh, J.B. Ojuang, Joaquin Dungu, and any other judge to come and swear them in. We know what they are planning. Let me say this. Mm. These, co these amendments are an affront to free and fair elections that were supposed to be conducted in the 60 days that were directed by the Supreme Court. Okay. If you believe won the elections, as they say, and they have the numbers, why do they need to change the law? If they won it on 8th of August, in a free and fair, as they say, and the numbers are in those ballot boxes that they want to open, why, do, why are you changing the law? The law that made you win. You see, Linda, Lastly, uh, Linda, mm. I want to say this. Okay. This country is not about Jubilee. Neither is it about, is it about NASA. This country is about the 45 million Kenyans. And every vote counts of the 19,000 registered voters. So if you want to make a law, it must be a law that will take care of the interest of all Kenyans irrespective of where they stay and where they live. Mm. All Kenyans who are registered voters, 19 million, irrespective of whether they, they, where they vote and where they come from. If Jubilee wants to make a partisan law that favors certain regions, certain kind of brand of politics, and it serves some partisan interest, then they are doing injustice to this country. You remember how we changed the laws in the last parliament. Yes, it was. We formed a bipartisan team of seven people, uh, uh, actually a joint select committee from both houses, from both parties, and we agreed on the nature of the motion to be discussed, we agreed on the issues to be discussed, and we came up with uh, amendments to the Election Act and the Elections, uh, the IEBC Act, and even we made the election offenses as a separate act. Okay. And everybody was happy. You remember, it was even passed without a comma, without you know, a full yeah, stop. Just change, just change it as the way it is. Now, how do you expect certain parts of the country who are not represented by Jubilee? For example, where I come from is not represented by Jubilee in this country. I represent them in ODM. Certain other places are, rep in, uh, are represented by ODM. You expect them to, ac to accept anything done by Jubilee because they have the numbers in parliament, numbers which we are not sure of even how they came to parliament. As you rightly put it, Mashimua, you're the representative of the people, then maybe that should have been a reason why you'd have been part of this ad hoc committee that is now looking at the laws. You see, we cannot be part of an ad hoc committee on an issue that has already been, an agenda that has already been set, decided, mm. and it has an end. We know the end of There's this. There's no use. We have no value. See, Linda... When a bill... And please answer what he says. Yes. Why, if, if Jubilee is sure that it won the August 8th election, why is it changing the laws halfway? First and that I has been asked several times. First, I want to tell you that uh, any bill that is introduced on the floor of the House must come from somewhere, either through a private member or through a political party or through a committee. So, and when those bills are brought to the floor of the House, then the parliament owns, it begins to debate and approve, amend, change commas, or shoot down whatever they think, if, if, if they think that whatever is being proposed is an illegality or doesn't mean, is not in the interest of Kenyans. And uh, we said, as a, as a house, let us come up with a, a, a legal committee mm. 
both NASA and the Jubilee. Not NASA and the Jubilee, but rather the majority and the minority, so that we can put together a team to look into these uh, weighty issues. They have not brought their names. And the, the, the rules of uh, proceeding the House are very clear on quorum. He says it's an exercise in futility. There's That's no what they think. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, they know if, if they have been losing an, ex an election, and they know they have uh, the, the, the minority have, in the House. We have never lost then they think uh, Then they think that they are also going to lose. We have never lost any, any election. Okay. Let, me, let me come to the, to the issue at hand. We are changing these laws because of what the Supreme Court did. Okay. So we must have, uh, they were planning to collude with uh, some uh, returning. No, are, you see, some returning the, ruling, the ruling of the Supreme Court was very clear. Yeah. And the ruling of the, the Supreme Court said this. The ruling of the Supreme Court said that IBC to conduct elections within 60 days with the, within the confines and the dictates of the Constitution and the law. They never told IBC go make new laws. I don't know where that's coming from, but I know it is you coming see, Linda, from the minority rulings. You see, as members of parliament, okay, we uh, have this scenario. Mm. The Supreme Court has said we will again annul that election if we will not follow the law. And they were planning to connive with the returning officers and some presiding officers not to sign those forms How again. How are they planning to collude How? with them? Are we, are they, are, are we, are so returning? that's why we are Listen. saying that... Uh, we must put it very clear that when you are a presiding officer and you fail to sign a form... Let me ask you something. Okay. Who are the employers of the returning officers? You will officer? find yourself in jail. <laughs> Who employs returning officers? Is it NASA or IBC? IBC, okay. How do we connive with employees of and, and, an independent body? Surely. You see, have those you are... At, have no. you looked at those forms, Real? Yeah, but those are fake forms okay, that has no listen, signature. Listen, fake forms? I need, Why I, would I you need, sign a form they, they were made in Bombas of Kenya. Officer. No, but those forms were made in Bombas of Kenya. But you believe, you the know. reason why this is also a concern, Mushimio, is because even IBC chair Wafula Chebukati spoke about this particular election. Before we listen to what religious leaders had to say, um, I'd like us to listen to what uh, Wafula Chebukati had to say on the changes that are now being proposed. Yes. Um, could we listen to what Wafula Chebukati had to say um, on the changes that are now being proposed? A and that brings the issue of inclusivity. You know, you're coming up with a law that affects 45 plus million Kenyans. Surely there should have been consultation from all sides, all political devices. Let's listen to Chebukati first. Come on. Let's go. We don't need any more laws to give Kenyans an election on 26th of October. But if Parliament passes the laws, I have also said I hope those laws will not change the framework we have put in place because if they do so, then they'll put us in a very precarious situation because we have already set training manual. Okay, Mashimiro, go. We will not change those laws that will affect the framework which IBC will operate in. Okay. What we are simply saying that we want to make things more clear. For example, that if from the polling center, the results will be transmitted electronically to the national charting center. But if the figures that will be electronically transmitted will be questioned, mm. or they will have doubts, the figures are changed, then we will go back to that polling center and pick the manual, and pick the manual form. And what contained in the manual form is what will be accepted as an official result from that particular polling center. You know what that means? Okay. You know, Okay. Because what happens is that, that what is going to happen. So what does that mean? You know what it means? When the electronic fails in, for example, in a constituency in Bongoma, and the, the electronic transmission failed, so the, the returning officer has to carry the manual mm. to Nairobi because the manual prevails. So when he reaches Nakuru, he can just sit in a hotel and change it <laughs> and then bring oh, another form. Because see, now it's manual. Yeah. Yeah. It's manual. Yeah. In That's what the polling, I want to... I want to but I want the to, agents want come on. The agents, no, no, agents remain there. Leader. They don't come with the retirement. Yeah. Unless my friend is a take, has completely taken a leave of thinking. Uh -huh. In a polling center, we have agents, <laughs> we have journalists. They are taking photos of the... Where were they they are they? taking copies of, the, where were of, they of that form. <laughs> where so were they how can somebody change? No, where were those people on 8th? 8th of August, we did an election. We are talking about those people to come next Listen, Linda, you know, this has... <laughs> These people, yeah. first they are legislating for IBC. Okay. In the, in the normal circumstances, it is IBC should, that should have picked the ruling of the Supreme Court, sat somewhere, and identified the gaps okay. in the process of electioneering by dint of that ruling, and say, 
we require the assistance of parliament to legislate for us this and that so that we can have a, a better and proper election this time than the, the other one. But now it is the other way around. It's Jubilee that has identified the gaps in the election process yeah. and they want to fix it for IBC. That tells you that they just want to fix it to make it for them easier to win or to propel themselves so into power. You see, when you all... listen to NASA speaking, mm. they are saying when it comes to amending this law, they are saying even Chepkati has accepted that he is ready to conduct an election, doesn't need any new laws to guide him. Mm. But now when it comes to, before even these amendments came, came in, they were saying uh, Chepkati, uh, Chiloba should go, they are not, yeah. uh, they are not uh, you know, sure that uh, will, they will comply with, with their laws. Yeah, so this is double standard. No, it is not double standard. The issues you are raising, <clears throat> the so-called irreducible minimums, necessarily they don't require change of law. They are basically administrative. Hiring of a firm to print ballot papers mm. doesn't require any change of and law. And you're saying none of them has been OT for Mofo is a vendor. doesn't require change of law. Okay. You know, putting up proper returning officers do not require any change of law. Chasing Chiloba because of bungling the election does not require any quick change one, of law. Quick one, quick one, quick mm. one. So if your irreducible minimums are not met, what next? There will be no election. Which... Do we okay. <laughs> People, I want us to listen to what religious leaders are about to say about the changes and the demands from both sides uh, before we wrap up this show. Let's listen in. We recognize that uh, some of the demands do appear to make sense, uh, both in NASA and Jubilee, but evaluating them, we don't think they are matters of life and death. And three weeks to the election, the program committee of NCCK has called upon NASA and Jubilee to drop all their demands and go to the election. All the Catholic bishops, the sheikhs, the, the bishops from Anglican everywhere feel that let us do nothing other than election on 26 and let us shelve everything, notwithstanding that we went through every amendment and we liked all of them. But we said, please, just for the sake of the people, because the, the, the common people in Kenya, we feel, can suffer a lot. Mm. Junet, I'll begin with you because you're saying if your irreducible minimums are yeah. not met, there will be no elections. Religious leaders are saying, is there a way that maybe you can just let go of some of these demands and Jubilee also stops the amendments and let's have an election? No, no, you see, the amendments have got nothing to do with our irreducible minimums. The amendments are changes <coughs> of law in parliament. Our irreducible minimums are administrative issues that affect the elections, which can make the elections free, fair, very viable and accountable. Mm. Now, we cannot just go to an election that is going to be handled and uh, done the same way the other one was done. So it is like insanity, doing the same things the same way and mm. accept, ex expecting a different result. Okay. No different results will come out. So if they say that we don't need to have an we, we just need to go to an election for the sake of it, we are not ready to waste our time. Okay, so an election for the sake of it, you're not willing to waste your time, yeah. and if your irreducible minimums are not met... There is no election. Okay. Moshimiwa, you get the final word. NASA has no authority to stop elections. <laughs> elections in this country can only be stopped by two bodies, IEBC and the court. So when you see them saying that there, are, there will be no elections, mm. they are simply saying in a good way that they are going to sponsor chaos in this country. And uh, when you sponsor chaos, I mean, it will be nothing new from okay. uh, what we know of them. Like I said when we were beginning, that uh, these people are interested to grab power, how to do it, yeah. when to get there, whether people will die, mm. some blood will be shed. It's none of their business. You know, the chaos... 30 seconds. I need to wrap up. Yeah, the chaos he's talking about is on both sides. Okay. The police that they have unleashed on us, mm. that after the elections killed 30 people in Kisumu, 10 people in Nairobi, 16 people in Migori. Those are more dangerous goons than even the people is describing as, as chaotic. All right, people, you've been watching Crossfire. Thank you for staying with us. We had Jeanette Mohamed, Suna East, Member of Parliament. Mishima, thank you for your time. And we had Dilma Swekesa Barasa, Member of Parliament for Kimilili. Thank you as well for your time. I'm Linda Gutu. Have a good night. You should be happy.